had some very interesting conversations with some Uber drivers as I was moving the vehicles. And essentially, uh, Uber drivers, um, I ran the car to a guy who drives for Grub Hub. Grub Hub. He says he can make 1500 a week. Um, there is opportunity out here. There's a lot of opportunity out here. But there are many people who are not taking advantage of the opportunity. They're just out here living life, doing whatever they need to do, and they're not taking advantage of the opportunity. And this is where America is ready for socialism. Socialism is about to make a big, big appearance in American society. With these stimulus payments, these are precursors, uh, well, preliminary moves toward universal basic income. And I was talking to an Uber driver the other day, and he said he picked up someone, and the guy was talking to him, and he's like, I make more sitting at home on unemployment than I do working, so I'm not going to work. God told him that. And this is something that I brought up during my um, early live streams last year. I was like, this $600 bonus, people going to clown. People going to clown. You know, everyone is not an enterprising go-getter. There are many people who are just going to um, chill. They're going to chill. They're going to um, take advantage of a situation. That's what they're going to do. And that's kind of where we are with, you know, society. Because essentially, I see the de-evolution of society. I, I cannot remember this guy's name. I will put link it. I will pin this, pin the, pin this channel. Because he was talking about society, how people don't have hobbies, people don't even have good sex, and I'm seeing, um, let's call it a, a screen time, an iPhone society, a mobile phone society, where people are literally living on their phones, living on social media, versus uh, actually living a productive stable life because one of the things that I have seen and I've come to understand is people are going to do what people are going to do like I made a decision to put content on this channel that I knew was not going to have a widespread appeal I made that decision I know the things because essentially um, like this whole thing of talking about millionaire habits. All right, you know what the millionaire habit is? Start a business. That's a millionaire habit. You can do all of these things. You can get up early. You can wear the same clothes. But unless you have a business, you're not going to become a millionaire. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, it, it's frustrating because this kind of stuff, this kind of content gets the views because people are uneducated on what it really takes to become a millionaire. And that's that's not bad. That's not bad. What's bad is people don't want to become educated. That's bad. That's the bad situation. They want to keep watching all of these tactics, these fluff videos. Let's call them fluff. Just fluff. No real um, no real substance to them. And they're trying to cheat the system. Because uh, I got a video on Savage Finance that's talking about you got to be intentional with your money. And essentially guys, I, w I, want, you to, I want you to be with me. You're looking at a two to three year journey if you're in deep doo-doo, you know, you've made some bad decisions, you've got car payments, you got credit card debt, 
you're in you're in for a haul to go ahead and straighten it out. I mean, you know, it, it, it didn't happen overnight and you're not gonna fix it overnight. And there are many, many people who want these fast, quick, simple solutions to complex problems. It is just simply not gonna happen. And you know, like I said, I made the decision. I'm gonna teach you guys what works. And often, what works is not sexy, it's not pretty. Like, all right, take the people who are buying Bitcoin and the folks who made money with GameStop. It happened. It was a real thing. Now, let's say I loaded up on Bitcoin when I bought my Bitcoin. It still would have taken me seven years to become a millionaire if I loaded up on Bitcoin. So, People are looking for exceptional situations as if they're the norm. Like if you got money from cryptocurrency, bless you, you got lucky. You're not a financial genius. There was a guy who tried to start a business, actually it was in the comments, he couldn't start the business, but he bought some cryptocurrency. Hello, you're not that bright. You're not that good. You got lucky and people are mistaking luck for skill and financial savvy. It is the craziest things that we are living in in this time because people are looking at getting lucky as the template to building a business and other things. So one of the things I want you to understand is we're gonna build businesses together that make money. It's like, you know, I, I, I lay out a plan in the Savage Finance video because you can get out of deep doo-doo. You can, but it's gonna take time and it's gonna take being intentional and it's gonna take the proper mindset. And one of the things is like, I have a lot of folks who come from me like, hey man, you, you're, you're, you're still talking crap about crypto. Yeah, because crypto is not going to help most of you. Here's the thing, like right now, there, there's so much, like one of my big issues is, there, crypto is a deep, deep rabbit hole. It's a deep, deep rabbit hole. And you can spend your time studying crypto charts, looking at altcoins, or you can be spending your time building a business. You only have so much time. So you could like, you know, um, right now options trading has become a big thing. And options trading can work if you become skilled, but it's gonna take you some time. And it's gonna, like, I have a friend who does options trading. He's been doing it 15, 16 years. And he does about $300,000 a year from options trading. Guess how much money he's working with? He's working with 1.2 million. That's the size of his trading account. And I, I've had people, it's like, you don't have to have a big trading account. I'm like, all right, keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. You got people out here who feel that they can turn $500 into $100,000 and that this is a normal process that everybody doing it everybody like tell you 500 to really uh, I did some research you know how many people made a million dollars or over a million dollars one a hundred and fifty three thousand people out of a population base of 330 million so that means 329 million people 850,000 did not make a million dollars. This is from the Internal Revenue Service website. So all of these people who are talking about uh, doing this stuff, they must not be paying taxes because it's not reflected in the real record, all this money that folks are making. It's not being reflected at all. 
because essentially now on Clubhouse, everybody's a millionaire. Everyone's got like a nine figure business. You know how hard it is to build a nine figure business. I mean, that puts you close to the billionaire territory mark. Let's say you spend 25 years building this business and you get it up to 900 million. You're real close to a billion. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of um, effort and business savvy. But right now, man, you know, it's the weekend and I, last night I had a great night. Um, shout out to Hal's, H-A-L Steakhouse. If you want a nice juicy steak, that's the place you can go. Place was packed. Um, had a nice steak, had some nice sides, had a nice dessert, had a few drinks. And, you know, check it out. Now, it, it ain't cheap, all right? If your wallet a little light, you might need to stay out of house. I'm just saying, just saying. But one of the things that I am seeing in, you know, like, it's the weekend. Like, I worked yesterday and I'm working today. I'll probably be working weekends for the next two or three months while I run these experiments and get some things done. Um, and here's the thing. And this is one of the things that so many people miss. They, you cannot look at me from the perspective of you. Now, what does that mean? What's what I mean when I say that? Like many people look at me and they will say like, if I had it like that, I would be doing X, Y, and Z. You're not me. You're not me. You don't have my experiences. You've not, because you know, starting businesses and creating products and stuff, that's fun. That's just fun. It's not like work to me. And also, the let's talk about the chill mode. A lot of people want to get a gang of money so they can chill. And they're they're working to create chill mode. And any entrepreneur who has been successful, who's built something of note, will tell you that the chill mode ain't real. The chill mode ain't real. The chill mode ain't real. Because essentially when you're doing being an entrepreneur and you're building stuff and you're creating stuff and you're positioning yourself for success there's a lot of work involved like i've done this several times i've started multiple businesses and i already know like uh honestly i will tell you i made some mistakes like i bought four um high-end cars last week one of them had a radiator leak the other day, so I had to take it off Turo. I got to take it to the shop and get it fixed. And then one of them has too many miles, and all I'm gonna do is just trade it in on something else, but I gotta wait until I get the title, because I can't do anything without the title. And, you know, um, that's gonna take probably June to get the title, so I'll be sitting on that. So that's, you know, Essentially, that's not money that's locked up forever, but that's just money that I cannot use. I, I tried to put it on hire car. The site kept messing up. I don't know if it, I, I don't know. I'm going to try again later. But essentially, I will have three video, video, three vehicles for Turo, maybe four. I may go ahead and put the uh, nicest Acura on there because it has the, the rear view screen, the rear view camera screen, and all that other stuff. And essentially, I know starting a business that things are going to go wrong. I know this from starting many businesses because essentially what you're going to do is you're going to come out with some assumptions, right? You're going to come out with some assumptions and then you're going to put them to the marketplace and the marketplace is going to go, uh, yeah, we like that. No, we don't like that. It's just that simple. The marketplace is going to let you know if it likes what you have to put out or it doesn't like what you have to put out the marketplace the marketplace is real efficient in that regard the marketplace isn't going to play any games with you the marketplace is going to let you know 
what the dealio is ASAP. That's the marketplace. The, the marketplace is pretty, it's real. It's like either you win or you lose. That's the marketplace. And I've been in many marketplaces and stuff. So I know how this goes. And essentially, you know, when I was coming out with my plan to buy 30 cars by June, I should have, because like I said, this is really good for me because it refreshes my business mindset because I'm like, oh, okay, so you gotta run some experiments. And um, I'm thinking about buying this Porsche tomorrow to put on the Turo, because here's the thing. Uh, there's been some people who've been talking about the way that I'm doing it is wrong because they're addicted to credit. All right, let me go ahead and give you a breakdown. There are not that many cars that you can put on Turo that are gonna cash flow more than the payment. Let me let me go ahead and say, uh, essentially, like Turo has a car calculator, right? And I, if you're gonna do Turo, I invest you, I suggest any car you, you, you plan on putting on there that you run the numbers, because essentially all the cars that I put on there that Turo said were hot, they're actually hot. I mean, I got the Porsche is rented out. I think the Porsche is gonna stay out. I think the Range Rover, once I get it fixed, it's gonna stay out. Um, so that car calculator is valuable. And uh, I go out and get this Porsche, that other Porsche, the Porsche is probably gonna stay out. And essentially, you can only finance so many cars in your name. You can only finance so many cars in your name because it's gonna be income based. Um, the Mr. Organic and um, Tall Guy Reviews, they have run into their car limits and these guys have ultra high income. Mr. Organic has ultra high income and they've run into a five car limit and they have ultra high income so here you are making thirty thousand dollars with your 850 credit score thinking you're gonna be able to buy 10 cars it ain't happening so uh what i would probably do once i work out the business model because once again i have business credit and once you know it's gonna take a few months like here's the thing i'm talking to you and i'm talking to myself it's going to take time it's going to take time so let's say i go ahead in between now and december i get 10 because probably what i'm going to do is some high-end cars i get 10 high-end cars on Turo. And at that point i will take the business credit and i will start using that to buy cars with the business credit that it's going to be a game changer because my business credit, I will be able to buy a lot of cars and then use the additional revenue from the business to use even more business credit. But once again, I mean, my business credit profile isn't really set up for that because I could use business credit and have them pull my personal credit and then they will create a business credit profile for me and they will not put it on my personal. So that could be good, but I really want to do this 100% in the business off of business credit. And I think the Wells Fargo uh, credit card is going to be a big part of that process because I'm almost eight months on that card. So that card's going to unsecure like September, October. So, and I get my twenty-five thousand back, and then um, just use that money to buy more cars, you know. Because I'm committed to making this work, you know. It, it's just going to take some time, and this this is one of the things that I, I am talking to you guys. It's going to take time for you to build your businesses and get that money, and all of these crypto scams and all of these uh, quick money scams are there to seduce you. And what you're doing is wasting precious time. You know, you can be all on crypto and I hope it works out for you, but I know what worked for me and that's what I teach. 
starting a business. I started my first business when I had a job. Did I quit my job when I started my first business? No, no. I kept my job, I had money coming from my job, I had money coming from my business. And this is one of the most pernicious lies that I see in YouTube advertisements. You could take this course in four to five weeks you can quit your job and making all this money. It is an absolute lie. It is a flat out lie. And these people should be ashamed of themselves because here's another part of that. And this is why I talk about the three-year journey. It's going to take you time to acclimate to additional income. Let me say this again. It's going to take you time to acclimate to that additional income. People win the lottery and they instantly, they, they go broke within five years. You want to know why? Because they're not acclimated to having that kind of money. They're not used to it. Like, you know, when I was showing receipts, $150,000 in my checking account, you know how many people would lose their minds if they had $150,000 that they have access to? They'd be out spending, 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 spending. I am used to, and this is not me being uh, a bragging person, but I'm used to having large sums of money in my life just sitting i am used to that and until you become used to this because essentially most of america once they start making money and this this is something else you see this often with high income couples that literally three four five hundred thousand would be up in their bank account because the money's stacking up because they're they're just not crackheads they're not crackheads but if you're a crackhead or an addictive personality person or you got these dreams where you just want to ball, you want to take private planes, you know, this this whole thing of flying private. Um, I remember Chuck Smith, who was a radio personality, he was talking about it and how he charted a, a jet to go somewhere from him and his girlfriend. And it was $20,000. And he said he did that once. He said, man, I could spend $20,000 or I can spend $600 to go to the same place. So this whole notion of flying private and finding a jet, I think that is Instagram flexing because from a financial, standgar financial uh, standpoint, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Why are you gonna spend 20,000 to go someplace that you can go to the same place for 600? Now, at now, take Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone was literally flying between Florida and Texas looking at multiple properties. He was hitting up four, five, six cities a day. Now, if you are in a situation where you're hitting up multiple cities per day, a private jet makes sense for business because you cannot hit that many cities in a day flying commercial. You just can't. So if you have a need of that kind of travel, that makes sense. But just to be charting jets, flying private, just cause you got a little money, you keep doing stuff like that. Cause this is what I call the stupid zone. Like I really don't lose money. I'm not like, you know, the most money I have lost in the last 12 years. I lost some money when I was giving the courses away for free. I lost money there. Um, that was big money. That was like 2016, I believe. And this year, my second biggest loss was 5,000 on the drones that disappeared. That That's because essentially, I don't put myself in the position to be losing money. I mean, the Porsche I bought, guess what? I can sell that car right now for $6,000 more than I paid for it. I mean, essentially, you know, the, the, the people have been talking about that car. They don't really know the car market because they haven't studied the car market. And they're just speaking out there. But because they're uneducated and they don't know. But I can sell my Porsche right now for $6,000 more than I paid for it because I checked. And because uh, essentially, they're literally flying off the dealer's showrooms. Uh Atlanta Perimeter Porsche, which is the second largest Porsche in the United States, Porsche dealership. 
they don't have any. They don't have any in stock. And I went in there and I was thinking about ordering uh, another one. And they said, you're, you're looking at probably a year to get your car. A year. A year to get my car, right? So uh, essentially, I can actually sell this for roughly the same that I paid for it. And, you know, essentially, when you get money, you want to be conservative with your money, like this whole thing with this car business. Right now, the used car market is hot. It is hot, hot, hot. So a lot of these cars I bought, because uh, I'm going to keep the Porsche, because uh, the Porsche, I'm going to keep probably the Range Rover. The black Range Rover, as soon as I get the title, I'm gonna trade it in on something else with less miles. And I'm, I'm working, I'm developing a working business model as we go along. Because like, here's the thing. I actually am in a good situation because like, uh, I'm gonna take the, because the black, eight, the black range is at, um, my parking spot. So I'm gonna switch that out and bring the black range back to my house because I can have four cars do the HOA. I can have four cars, which is ridiculous. Uh, I'll park that at the house until I get the title and then I'm gonna be shopping for another car to replace it with. And I'm probably gonna go out and buy some more stuff. Um, I'm just being careful because like the Porsche is out. So this whole month of June, I need to see what stays out and brings in money. Stays out and brings in money because uh, the Acura, the Camrys, they're all out. Uh, the highest price Acura, which is the one I paid the most for, and that's another lesson I've learned. I got to be really judicious with my shopping. And this is one of the reasons that I just kind of chilled on buying cars. And then, you know, I got to get this Range Rover fixed because it has a coolant leak. Get that fixed tomorrow. And then, you know, it, it would be the one with the, the mileage that's under, because I can't rent that out because whoever rent it, and, and then, then they go somewhere and then it's, it's not a good experience to rent a car that breaks down on you. It's not a good experience. So uh, I'll get that fixed and I'm gonna be working on my business plan and I got a lot of information I gotta do. I got a lot of um, research I got to do because essentially, you know, some people in there are talking to the social media people. I have no intentions of talking to any of these social media people about the car business. None. Because um, I cannot say, because I really don't know them. I don't really know them. I don't know their work. But I do know business. And essentially, everyone is like, get a car, put it on Turo, right? How many people have been talking to you about going out, getting their own insurance car, insurance money, doing their own marketing, and creating their own rental car company? No one. They're not doing that. Because see, with Turo, and now Turo has a plan. Turo has a commercial rental plan. Like, if you have your own commercial insurance you can put your cars on Toro and keep 95% of the profits. How, who, who, who's told you that? Because essentially, Cameron's Law. At some point, all third-party plat, third platforms act in their best interest. Here's something else. You're probably not going to see a video, because I'm going to make a video on it, to let people know. Toro, I don't know what they used to use, but Toro is requiring you to set up a Stripe account. I got a message from Stripe that my payouts are going to be every two weeks. And I guarantee you, um, some other Toro people, I don't know if they're going to make a video about it, but I'm going to make a video about it because this is where having cash comes in handy. So now, because essentially I was just going to take the cash from the business and buy more cars. I wasn't going to take the cash out, but essentially, um, no one is telling you these real important details because let's say you go out, you finance a car, and you put it on Toro. And 
your 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 payment is due before you get your two week cash distribution. You got to pay that car note, and it ain't coming out of company funds. I remember when I was poor. How many times? And this is one. This is one of the, the biggest reasons that I have my own business. Um, I remember when I was poor that I had late rent and some late payments, but I had two weeks in the hole at the job. I had money coming to me, but I couldn't access it because it wasn't time. And I hated that. It was infuriating. So what you're going to find yourself with Turo is your money is going to get funny. And uh, a lot of people are buying a car, sticking it on Turo. I, like Once again, do your research before you stick a car on Turo. Do your research. And I'm here to tell you that people on Turo don't like normal, regular cars. Not in the Atlanta market. Like that Porsche, I bought it. I listed it Friday. That Porsche rented Saturday. It, it rented Saturday. And uh, I think that Porsche is going to stay out. It's a nice car. Uh, I'm probably going to get another Porsche. And we will see. Because let's say this whole business does horrible, right? It, it just does horrible. Actually, that would be better than letting the money just sit in the bank. Because since I have these assets that I can sell, and I got to be smart about this. Because, like, you know, I had a plan. Like, if I, if I made some mistakes, what was my exit plan? And essentially, with the used car market being what it is, I could sell these things for more than I pay for in the coming weeks because inventory is not increasing so that's my exit plan like with this Range Rover that has too many miles to list on Toro and I can't seem to list it on hire car I may try to get around I'll do that when I get home but essentially one of the things that you have to understand is you you got to play this game a certain way you got to play this game to win you got to play this game to have um, a winning hand because essentially you know a lot of people with the financing like okay you can only finance so much like uh, there's this guy who's doing financing mortgages he's at his limit he can't not get any more properties he's at his limit bank's not going to give him any more mortgages he and his wife have maxed out their mortgage allotment and you know for me you know he cash flows from all this property of seventeen thousand dollars per month and they bring in ninety thousand dollars per month and they make it like oh i'm cash flowing this is such a beautiful they they speak about getting less of the money as such a big of a, a deal because they didn't pay for the property their renters are paying for the property they're not using their own money and they're so giddy about it but ask Dave Ramsey how that works out because essentially this is a great plan as long as everything is working but when stuff goes sideways this is when people start deleveraging and my goal is I'm going to pay cash for most of my cars uh, once again once my business credit gets to the point where I can buy cars I will use business credit to buy the cars I'll do that but personal credit I just kind of sat on like I'm not going to use my personal credit for Jack you know I'll, I'll have a few credit you know I've got some credit cards I use my credit cards and stuff but I'm not just because essentially your personal credit has a big gotcha when you use it your credit score goes down business credit don't work like that business credit your score stays good it's it's a strange strange thing i think they have an understanding that if you have business credit you're going to use it for business and you're going to be using it quite a bit so right now i'm in the process of building my business credit profile i'm like i'm saying i'm eight weeks in eight months in and essentially you know one of the things i was trying to do with the car business and this is COVID. 
Wells Fargo took all of the people out of its secure uh, products division and moved them over for the PPP and the EDIL loan stuff. And it says it on their website, it's like, uh, they, these people have been moved. I'm just like, you know, and COVID ain't going nowhere anytime soon. COVID is going to be here this time next year. Uh, you know, I'm in the state of Georgia where we can do what we want. <laughs> you know, Georgia never shut down. Uh, inside dining shut down for like four weeks and then it was back. And essentially, you know, we're doing what we want to do down here. But, us, you know, I want you guys to understand, you know, you, you, you got to work hard. I know you don't want to hear that. I know you want me to blow smoke up your booty and it's like, look, you can do this little hack and really not work that hard and make all this money. Um, it simply ain't true. It's just simply not true. I want you guys to be successful. I want you guys to win. I want you guys to be healthy. I want you guys to be wealthy. And this is why I'm giving you this kind of information. And some people are not gonna like it because you know, I, I be pissing on dreams. Like, there are so many people out there who feel that they got $500 and they're gonna put it in some crypto and they're gonna turn it into all of this money. And a lot of people are gonna lose in crypto. A lot of people are gonna lose in crypto. Like right now, the crypto marketing machine is on steroids. There are these bots that leave these comments virtually on every video well, if you know, if you don't invest in, you know, if you don't invest in crypto, a year from now you'll be kicking yourself. I've done the research. One percent of the world's population is invested in crypto. One percent. One percent. Not exactly a revolution, you know. If it was like ten percent, I was like, okay, we're moving, we're moving. It's less than one percent. And all these folks who are telling you they're making all this money in crypto. Uh, once again, because you know, people like it's easy money, it's easy money. I have become very suspicious of easy money, very, very suspicious of easy money because this is the reason if you get money easily and then things change, you will be ill equipped to get money the regular way. I call it the stripper. Like I got a picture of a stripper putting her money in the bank. It, it was hilarious. I mean, she had all these ones. Like, and you know what's funny? Cause I was after her. Cause essentially uh, she, she put the money in the window and they took the money through the window. And it was like, it looked like a lot of money, but it was all ones. I think it was like 700, 800 bucks in ones. I don't know if she made that in one night. I, I I don't I don't go to strip clubs. I don't I don't I don't know the strip club game. I, I don't know that. But I do know the business game. And guys, listen to me. If you go ahead and start today, you start that three-year journey. You start that three-year clock. You get it started. And that's funny. There's the Range Rover I have. Um, you, you start that process. You, you begin to create that harmony. You begin to create this process because you're looking at a three-year journey. No BS, no games. And, uh, and it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. But I'm here to tell you, it's going to be so worth it. It's going to be so worth it. Fun fact. House that sold in my neighborhood recently. Another. I'm not. I'm no longer the only black person in the neighborhood. I mean, this is about to be funny because I, I was going to go over and greet them because they were out and I waved at them and then they left. But they're, they're, they're moving in and I'm going to go over and greet them. And I'm going to... Um, tell them about some of the things that has happened to me in the neighborhood just to so they'll be armed because you know uh, 
they're not gonna be doing the kind of stuff that I'm doing, but there's some um, stupid, stupid, dumb motherfuckers in the neighborhood. There are some of these assholes. And um, it, it's, it's wild how um, this goes down. So I'm gonna go over and greet the new neighbors and welcome them to the neighborhood. Because it, it, it's funny, because I started cracking up when I was like, oh, oh, it's another, it's a black family. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That is funny. Because, you know, non-racist white people don't care if a black family moves in the neighborhood. They really don't care. It's like, oh, it's another family. But the racist people, ooh, they, they can't sleep at night. They be losing it. They be losing it. They be losing it. So that's the message for the day. Understand you got a choice. You can become part of the capitalist nation or you can submit to the socialist agenda. The socialist agenda is real. And what it's going to do is going to rob people of their ability to produce, rob people of their ability to create, rob people of their ability to be self-sufficient you're going to see some crazy crazy stuff that is going to be happening in the world due to socialism due to um, all of these things that are going on and essentially it's going to be cataclysmic for because I, I just feel like like I said when this whole thing, pandemic thing started and they started pumping out that money, I knew people were going to clown. And you've now had people who've not worked but have received money for months. You know what that, that does to a person? That rewires a person, man. It rewires them. Changes their whole paradigm. It's crazy. So, once again, the price of the Art of Holding has not gone up. Links below. You can get that. You can become a corporate citizen. And we can work on putting you in the position to take part in the great wealth transfer. Because it's, it's on and popping. The great wealth transfer is real. And you want to be part of it or you're going to get ran over by it. Choice is yours all right so that's all i got for you guys we'll see y'all in the next one